You know the worst part about all of this? I have done this challenge over and over and the month that I have to do the challenge, I can't find books to fit the challenge because I've already read them. Grrr. <laughs> Let's get right into it. Hello everyone, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel, Mooney Reads, where I talk about books and things. And I have a secret that I have been keeping from you. And that is that I have low-key actually been following a readathon. Now, if you know me, if you have been around for a while, you know that there's nothing that I dislike more on BookTube than readathons. I think they put pressure on people to read. I think that sometimes the prompts are kind of ridiculous. And I think that a lot of the times they're like, so read seven books in seven days. And it's like, yeah, some fun, fun, you know, and it's hard. And it just takes out the joy of reading for me. I also think you're tilted. Hang on. I don't know if that's better, but we're gonna go with it. Anyway, but starting at like the beginning of September, the end of July, I'm not July, the end of August, I started seeing something called the Space Opera Readathon. Is that what it's called? I am so prepared for my own video. Okay, no, it's called Space Opera September. And I'm like, wait a minute. I like space operas and I read a shit ton of space opera. So what the hell am I doing not participating? So I low-key started participating, but I didn't want to make an announcement video until I was sure that I, number one, had the books because remember, book buying ban. And number two, that the books that I did have that fit are books that I am really excited to read. Now, I'm not following this, like, this is the announcement of the TBR that I plan to read, but if I don't get to these books, although I have already read some of them, it's not the end of the world. But I did kind of want to make a video because space operas, oh, I love space operas! <laughs> so. Um, I'll link down below the creator of Space Opera September. He's so cool. His channel is so cool. And I actually heard about it from, I believe, Tori Morrow and a couple of other people first. So, anyway, I'm gonna get right into it. I actually, um, I have the books on my phone, that's why I'm looking down. I have two books per category, except one category that has two books. Like, Look, I don't really understand how like you can go, I think, the rebel route or the other route. I just did, I just saw, looked at the prompts and I was like, I want to read this, I want to read this, I want to read this, I want to read this. So I am following all of the prompts except one, which I'm really pissed off because I read this book recently and it would have fit that prompt. I could reread it. I could just reread this book. Could I do that? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I didn't think about that. <laughs> but anyway, let's jump into the books that I am reading for, or that I'm trying to read for Space Opera September. And I'm really excited. This is like when I did the history challenge, the history a thon that Emma posted about in a couple of books. Link up here. But anyway, the first prompt is to read a space opera novella. Now, in this one, I actually had a really hard time because, again, I read a bunch of space opera novellas during the year and now I'm like stuck and I, I actually had to Google space opera novellas to figure out what I wanted to read and also that was within my capabilities with my book buying ban. So this is what I came up with. Now this is, I am counting this as a space opera but actually I don't think it counts but anyway, it's Emergency Skin by M.K. Jemison. From what I understand, this is about humans have left Earth because we destroy it like 10, doesn't that tend to happen in space operas? But anyway, we have left Earth, we've said bye bye, and now somebody comes back to Earth to like uncover ancestral secrets about Earth. That I think this is about again you know me going into books blind and then being like that was not what that was about but anyway since it's set on earth I think for the most part and I already read to be taught if fortunate 
<laughs> and the murder bot series, all of it. I read all of the murder bot series. I was like, well, this one is on my Kindle, and I'm also trying to get my Kindle reading. I like my Kindle books down, but I'm working on my physical books first. But surprisingly, I don't have a lot of physical space operas, but I have that one, which in my heart it counts, and and this is my channel, so it counts. But because I know that that actually doesn't count, I looked up and I saw that George R. R. Martin actually wrote Night Flyers. Now I tried to watch the the um, uh, Netflix series; it was really bad. But this novella looked pretty good, and I can listen to it because I have got credits on Audible. So yay for that! It looks scary and sci-fi and space opera, which is like. Is this Monica's dream come true? Please let it be Monica's dream come true. <laughs> All right, now for the next prompt that I'm going for, it was either read, what was it? Read a diverse book. I think it was read a diverse book with a diverse protagonist. So for that, I could reread this, but I'm not sure I'm ready to reread this. But just so you know, The Vanished Birds totally goes into that. I'm I might reread it now, now that I think about it, because I've got the audiobook for it, so why the hell not, you know? And I also got the physical copy. But I decided to go the other route, which is read two space operas written by a woman. The first one that I'm going to read... I might have already read it. You might have already seen it in a video, but that is Numenon by Marina J. Loster... to 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 I... You guys know I can't say that name. I really try. Lost her. Lost her. There you go. But anyway, um, this is about a group of clones. Because this astrophysicist finds during his doctoral studies a star that is blinking in a weird pattern. But to get to the star, it's going to be like I'm like a millennia, a millennia, a millennia on Earth, but you know, space travel is gonna be less for them, whatever. The point is, they decide to go there, but instead of taking crew members and letting them procreate and stuff, they decide to take a limited amount of people that they think are the best people for this project and then just clone them over and over again. And let me tell you, um, I, I might, might if I have already read this book, um, love the concept and the idea and the execution. So that's the first one. And then the next book uh, is Space Opera written by a woman that I am a little bit trepidatious about. I actually kind of am only reading it because so many people have recommended it and that is Velocity Weapon by Megan O'Keefe. I have no idea what this is about. <laughs> I think it's People say Mass Effect E. Um, I haven't played Mass Effect. Read Mass Effect? I have heard of the term Mass Effect. But you know what? I'm willing to give it a shot. I'm willing to give it a chance. A lot of people whose taste in book is very similar to mine have recommended this to me. Lena from a, a sufficiently advanced Lena just keeps saying, read this shit. So. <laughs> So that's the one that I'm going for, for the second book, um, uh, the second space opera written by a woman. The next category might be my favorite category, and that is read a book, well, read, well, I keep saying book, just think, whenever I say book, just think space opera. Read a book published before you were born. Now I was born in 1987, so I was a little bit worried about this because, you know, I don't, I don't know a lot of books from before the year 2000, let alone 1987, but, but, I do have on my Kindle Babel 17 by Samuel R. Delaney, and I am so pumped for this, and Audible has it like a free download, like now they have this program, I guess because people kept returning books and getting credits back, you know, so, mm, I am... I am so excited to read this book, you guys. You have no idea. And, and, just in case, I also have, you know, trying to get my physical TBR down, The Drowned World by J.G. Ballard. Now, I don't have the audiobook for this. That's why I'm kind of a little bit dubious to read it because 
I have been audiobooking my life away because I'm still a little bit not in like the mental state to read physical books. So I'm a little bit trepidatious with this one. I'm a little bit hesitant. But you know what? This sounds so good. Although I don't think this counts because this is on Earth. You know what? It doesn't. But I might read it anyway. The final one is the one that I hate the most because if you have been around for more than three videos of mine, and if you haven't, I'm sorry, welcome to the madness. Um, and I'm saying I'm, say I'm sorry because my personality is a little bit dee, you know? <laughs> I hate big books and I hate the series. And the last prompt is read a space opera that is over 600 pages. And I decided to read Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. I want to read this book, but I just don't want to read a long book. But you know what? I have it in audiobook. So we're going to audiobook our way through it. Or maybe not, you know. Like I said, this is all just fun and games. I think that's the thing people forget about readathons. They're just fun. They're supposed to be fun. You're supposed to have fun doing this and if something is not fun and you're supposed to be doing it for fun then honey baby boo boo child stop doing it so this is my dubious kind of i might read these books in september tbr for the space opera september readathon i'm really excited about it um you guys know i love sci-fi and i love space operas i actually like eco sci-fi more which this is eco sci-fi and i believe um oh the first one i mentioned the nk jemison novella hang on i forget names <laughs> emergency skin is also eco sci-fi but you know what it's sci-fi <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. Anyway, space operas are awesome, sci-fi is awesome, and I am really, really pumped and excited. And also, doing this, I realized something uh, with my book buying, which we'll get into in another video. But I realized that I was buying a lot of books that I wasn't excited about, and I was just buying them because of the price point, and not because I was excited to read them. Which... No. No, that's not how that goes. I'm... I'm I'm so glad that I did this book buying ban because now that I don't have suddenly sci-fi to read, I'm like, what the fuck were you doing, bitch? That's what you like to read. So why weren't you reading it more? Like, why weren't you buying more sci-fi books? Because they were expensive. <laughs> Anyway, um, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you had a great time because I definitely had a great time filming it. And, and without further ado, I have to bid you adieu with a reminder that I post every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays without fail. And that I appreciate you and that I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Bye, guys. By the way, yes, I do like to embarrass myself on the internet. Yeah. <laughs>